Now, I started off over here, and then after 18 years, I moved to there. I moved to the city, and when I moved to the city, I was fascinated by it. I was interested in it as a place and how it functioned. I was interested in how all of these people moved together in the same place, worked together, and played together. Now, 30 years later, and I'm still fascinated by our cities and our place within them. Currently, there's 3.5 billion people living in cities, and that's predicted to grow to 5 billion people over the next 10 years. That's well over half the population of this Earth. Now, to give that some context, there's 56 million people living in cities in the UK alone, compared to just 11 million in rural environments. So, the question that occupies my mind is, where do we find the space for all of these people? Now, with this increased pressure in our built environment, this increased migration to our cities, finding space has become more and more difficult, especially green space, space for recreation, and space for play. Now, often the space that does exist is leftover space, small spaces between buildings, behind shops. It's often in-between space, useless space that only exists as a consequence of a number of useful spaces that come together. Now, these sites exist in every city across the world. You may well have passed them on your way here tonight. You may well pass them on your way home. Often they sit outside our conscious thoughts. We might not always recognize them as places. But I'm interested and passionate about how we might use these spaces within our communities, within our cities, and carve them out as places for people. Now, the places that I'm currently thinking about sit within the city of Lincoln. I work with architecture students in the Sinselbank area of the city. This is an area close to the city centre, a diverse population of around 7,000 people. It has a high street next to it, so it has the hustle and the bustle, the shops, the restaurants. But it does not always feel a part of the city. I'm sure we all know a place like this. Many of its streets are conceived in the 18th and 19th century, so they haven't been well suited to the introduction of the car. So it feels dense. There's not a lot of open space. And so the city council spoke with the residents and asked them what they would like to see improve, how they would like to see their area develop. And from this, it was found that there wasn't enough open space, there wasn't enough green space, and there wasn't enough space for play and recreation. And so a plan was put in place of how they might address some of these concerns. And as part of that plan was the introduction of a number of community hubs. And one of these hubs was Ground Lab. Now, Ground Lab was conceived by the Lincoln School of Architecture in the built environment in collaboration with the City Council. We sit within a bright orange shipping container and we have taken back some of this car parking space and we have used that space as space for people in the community offering studio space with small public space next to it. Projects manifest themselves as pop-up parks, street furniture, installations, and architecture. We concern ourselves with placemaking. Now, it was Louis Kahn who said, the street is a room by agreement a space in the city for common use. And we facilitate this understanding of a common room in the city for the community, 
and her projects aim to carve out space to allow this to happen. We run community workshops, we teach in the space, and we deliver live projects. Now, when we started speaking to residents, we understood quite earlier on that people were much more happy to talk and explore ideas about their community whenever they were doing something else at the same time, and preferably something creative and something fun. So we commissioned a series of artists to deliver workshops. We asked them to make clay pots, to work with wood, to work with metal, to explore forest skills, to draw, to print, to make a mess, and importantly, to make their mark. And what we understood was working with the community in these spaces aided this idea of community ownership of the space, making active streets. We also understood that because the area was dense and built up, the community did not often have opportunities to meet each other. And these workshops were often the first time when neighbours had a chance to come out and speak with each other. Now we also teach in the space. We bring students out into the community and teach and learn. Now this immersive architecture, this immersive learning, has provided students with an understanding of community context in which one day they will serve with real clients, real projects and real deadlines. But it has also allowed the community an opportunity to engage in academic and educational environments, particularly young people. And this is something that they might not have considered before. So Ground Lab is about breaking down barriers. We need to be accessible. We also run live projects. We work with the community and external stakeholders. We find projects, we find sites, and we deliver these projects. Current projects include public plazas and installation projects. But I'd like to, if I may, talk about a project which we've recently completed, a small pocket park. Now, the brief for this project was to deliver a space in which the community could reconnect with nature, somewhere to relax and to meet. And we worked with the Community Land Trust, the City Council and the residents and other stakeholders to develop the project and the design. The site for the project was a disused space within the community. It was an area that had been considered to entertain some antisocial behaviour. So it was fenced off and locked and left for several years. And we wanted to reactivate this space and reintroduce it back into the community as one of these external communal rooms. So we worked with the community in understanding their concerns for reopening the space. We met the community on site and delivered workshops which explored the ideas of participation and ownership. And we understood that working on the site allowed for ownership within the site. We drew ideas directly onto the ground. And this making marks in the ground aided this idea of ownership. We also invited school children to explore what they wanted to see happen in the site. Many of their ideas can be seen in the finished project. Unfortunately, Olympic-sized swimming pools with diving boards and football pitches couldn't be accommodated. But the project has been a great success. It's used by all ages across the community. The community have taken ownership of the space. They maintain it and grow it as a public space. So what has I learnt from this experience? Well, I've learnt that finding, accessing and making projects in these spaces takes time. It has taken a great many forward-thinking people across the city to make this project happen. So, is it worth it? Absolutely, and now more than ever, when increasingly 
we have less and less space within our cities. And much of that space is given over to private development. It's incredibly important now that we access the little space that does exist, that we carve that space out and we use that as places for people. These spaces have got the ability to assist in knitting the social and the urban fabric of place together. They can also importantly provide local identity to communities within cities, and they can provide inspiring local environments in which people can meet and play. Thank you.